All right, let's call the meeting for May 25th to order. All right, we'll do roll call first. Uh, Steve Ball, Here. Phoebe Benzinger, Jan Chastain, Chad Huffman, Here. Delphine Jetto, and Richard Rogers is absent. And I'm David Fisher, and I'm here. Um, so let's approve the minutes from, let's see, May 11th. I think that's right. That's presented. We have a second. All second. Thanks, Chad. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes? All right. All those opposed? All right. The minutes are approved. Um, Will, we got any uh, additions or deletions from the agenda? No, we do not. Okay. In that case, we got four agenda items um, today. So let's get going with the uh, color red townhome sketch plan. Uh, so it appears the applicant is not here uh, okay. for the color red. Uh, I would recommend moving it to uh, the last item on the agenda okay. uh, just to give them some time to show up. Let's do that. Yep. And then, okay, so then we got, uh, what do we got? Brown Ranch subdivision preliminary plat then. Yep. So I will pull up a presentation here. Thank you, Greg. Um, so here we have a, uh, a preliminary plat application. Uh, this is for Brown Ranch Subdivision Amendment 4. Uh, this is actually an application for two separate areas, both within Brown Ranch. The northern piece is off of uh, Donegal Drive, and the southern piece is an extension of Chestnut Drive. And so this project consists of approximately 17.233 acres. The northern portion is 17 single family lots within the R1 very low density district. And the southern, uh, southern piece is in the R2 low density district, which consists of 24 lots. Um, and so this shows our, uh, our subdivision process. Obviously, obviously you've all seen this before, uh, but this is in the preliminary plat stage where you'll make a recommendation to city council and then they will consider and approve or deny the application. When reviewing subdivisions, conformance with the master plan, subdivision regulations, zoning regulations, and all other applicable ordinances and regulations should be considered, including water, sewage, and utilities, relationship to topography and soils, traffic flow, emergency protections, and school impacts, as well as others. Um, the comprehensive plan should be used as a guiding document, but this is not legally binding, and it is possible that a decision may not satisfy every aspect of the comprehensive plan. Uh, and so in this plan, the area is listed as residential mixed density low, which is primarily intended for single family homes, but also allows for duplexes and small groups of townhomes. Both zoning districts are intended for low density, single family residential development. The Brown Ranch plan development number two was approved by the planning commission and city council back in 2003, which allowed for smaller lot sizes for the properties within the R1 zoning district. Uh, all lots adhere to this plan development or to the municipal code. And so here's the plat itself. The first page just consists of the plat notes and the signature lines. And then this is the northern piece, which is within the R1 district. Uh, as you can see, this consists of 17 single family lots. And then this here is the southern piece. Uh, note that north is to the left on this map. Uh, this is an extension of Chestnut Drive and consists of 24 single family lots. Staff finds that the preliminary plat is in compliance with all regulations and the comprehensive plan. The proposal meets the intent of zoning and the 2003 plan development. Staff recommends approval of this preliminary plat with the standard condition as shown on this slide. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll ask the applicant to step forward. Hi, Steve Stevenson, 125 Colorado Avenue. Uh, representing John Moyer. John's out of town right now, so he asked me to, to stand in. This is an extension of Brown Ranch, as you're well aware. Um, two areas that John uh, feels like the market is ripe for uh, extending in those areas. The northern section of 17, he actually did 
the wet utilities back in 2005 or six, I think it was. So those are uh, th that's a relatively easy section to do. The roads are cut, the sewers in, the water's in. Just need the dry utilities and to build the roads and sidewalk. The southern section is just a natural extension of um, of the street and will connect to the future Otter Road that comes across. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, any questions for me? You guys have any questions? No? Phoebe, right. Right. <laughs> no questions, Phoebe? Or? Jan, nothing? Okay. Thank you. You guys have questions for staff at all? No? Okay. Uh, in that case, we will um, open up the uh, public comment portion uh, for this agenda item. If there's anybody in the audience out there that would like to comment on, uh, on the preliminary plat, now is the time to come forward. And Greg, I don't know if we have anybody on on Zoom. So the, the Zoom meeting is uh, for uh, staff and applicants. Uh, no one from the public is on Zoom. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad we stopped that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, in that case, we'll close the uh, public comment portion. Um, and guys, if there's any discussion that is required here, it's pretty straightforward. So. Yeah, I have no discussion. Uh, well, here I'll go ahead and discuss. Um, no, if, if it's with the character of the the neighborhood that's already there and the area all around it, and it looks like it'll simply be a nice extension. So no concerns whatsoever. Just have a quick question for staff, for Scott. Is this on um, city sewer? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? Right. In that case, I would, uh, I'll entertain a motion if there is one to be made. I will happily make a motion. I hereby make a motion to recommend to City Council approval of the preliminary plat application with the following conditions. The approval of this preliminary plat is expressly conditioned upon City staff ensuring that all policies, regulations, ordinances, and municipal code provisions are met and that the applicant adequately addresses all of staff's concern prior to the execution of the fi final plat. The city staff is not authorized by this approval to execute the final plat prior to all conditions being satisfied. The requests meet the, the code criteria based upon the evidence and testimony presented at this hearing and in the staff report. Do I have a second? A second. Oh, thanks, Delphine. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. The motion passes unanimously. All right, agenda item uh, number two now, I guess, is the uh, Montrose Regional Health Ambulatory Care Center site development. Yes, thank you. Uh, I will pull up another presentation here. All right. So uh, this application is for a large retail site development project known as the Montrose Regional Health Ambulatory Care Center. Uh, you all probably remember that they came before you recently for approval of a variance to allow increased height within the B3 zoning district. Uh, that's our general commercial district. As you can see, the property uh, is in the B3 zoning district and is surrounded on all sides by other B3 zoning. Uh, as you know, ordinary site development applications are done administratively. However, large retail site development applications are brought before the Planning Commission. Uh, these are ordinarily required for retail establishments of more than 10,000 square feet of gross floor area. In this case, a plat note on the River Landing subdivision subjects all buildings within the subdivision to the large retail site development standards, regardless of size or use. Uh, this is one of multiple pages of site development plans that we review. Uh, of course, uh, everyone here at this table reviews these pretty heavily, um, whether it's large retail or just regular site development. Um, as well as to many other people within city staff and some external agencies such as DMEA, the Fire Protection District, etc. Uh, this first page shows the site layout as well as some of the requirements regarding parking, setbacks, access, etc. Uh, if you recall during the variance hearing, the city does have our own parking requirements, but due to the nature of the project, uh, they need significantly more parking than what the city would ordinarily require. Uh, these are the utility plans. Uh, I won't speak too much about this, but uh, if you have any questions, the applicant is here and also on Zoom. 
uh, and then Scott will hopefully be, uh, be able to answer some questions as well. Um, and this page here shows the utility plan, uh, excuse me, the landscaping plans. Uh, as with any site development application, landscaping is required, and we do have regulations regarding the number of trees, shrubs, etc. Uh, for a better look at what the building will ultimately look like, the applicant has provided us with some renderings. Uh, this is a view of the front facade. Um, this here is also the front with a uh, more straight on angle. Um, I will uh, ask the applicant to maybe uh, go through these in a little more detail. Um, this here is the rear facade. Uh, this is the side facing the river and the river trail, uh, as well as this one. Um, and so in conclusion, staff finds that this large retail site development application meets the requirements as set forth in section 4116. It is in compliance with local zoning and is compatible with existing uses in the area. Staff recommends approval of the large retail site development application. Um, and with that, I will ask the applicant or applicants to step forward. Good evening, uh, Jim Hartman, 2942 Vallejo. Um, so we've we've received a lot of feedback, great feedback from the variance meeting, as Will had mentioned, as well as um, had plenty of meetings with Scott, Will, and team. And I think we've made some adjustments to the site plan that should appease everyone here. Um, we did move the building back from the, the river to the center of the site and move the massing and, and the rest of the project more centrally located on the site. Um, we've also worked with Scott and team and Will to um, create some parking that's alongside Rio Grande and Orange. So that, that takes care of some additional parking needs that we had. Um, again, we do meet the parking requirements per code, but we're always seeking to provide additional parking to the patients just to enhance the experience. Um, in addition to that, we've dressed up the exterior um, alongside the, the building facing the river with a pedestrian walkway and some landscaping that can slow down traffic, give some um, you know, openness to the, the park and the, um, the walkway there. So we're looking at some improvements there. Those renderings that you've seen are conceptual renderings. Uh, we've certainly spent a lot of time on that. I think we exceed the city's requirements, but we're still working on some of the color palette and things like that. But generally speaking, I think we're, we're in a good direction and here today just to get the site plan approval so we can continue on. Any questions or comments? Thanks, Jim. <clears throat> Does have any questions for the applicant? Comments, anyone? No? Steve, nothing? <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yep. Uh, I've got a question for uh, staff real quick. Could you bring up, or like, you know, I guess you don't need to even bring it up, and just answer the question about where the, is there a part of the Connect Trail or the River Trail that goes by this? And where is it on, like it, it's just hard to see on the, on the drawings. Um, and how, like how do we, I guess, interface with this development and that so that they are, you know, in, in Congress and not overlapping or that kind of thing uh, so I'll pull up the plan um, it's probably a little easier to see in the packet just because um, unfortunately by showing it on the, the TV it's a little small but um, there is a uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor very well uh, there is a kind of a entrance exit on the rear of the building uh, with a walkway that connects to the river trail So the river trail here would just be on like, a bit further south of, or not yeah, south, but. Yeah, it's kind of immediately outside of their parcel um, okay. between them and the river. It stops, it was built with river landing, um, stops at the northern end, but we did secure the right way for it with that recent annexation um, for the property just north of here. So as that development continues, that would continue north, ultimately connecting, um, going following the eventual Rio Grande alignment, or following the river, joining with the eventual Rio Grande alignment, um, and eventually going down to East Oak Grove. So okay. continue it out that way. To clarify, there's currently already 
uh, walkway path behind what is now Hobby Lobby. And that is the river trail we're talking about that is simply going to continue to be there. Nothing really changes except for obviously a big building in the empty lot. Correct. Yep. This will just tie onto that. And I'm saying, yeah, this, this stops at the northern end of the property because that's the end of River Landing. Right. Um, and then eventually that will continue further north. Um, on the Rio Grande alignment, there is, our Grand, Rio Grande alignment, there is, you know, that Crusher Finds Trail. But, um, so we do have pedestrian connectivity. In and all so that, and the trail is about how far from the uh, property edge? Well, I can tell you. It 20, seems like we've got a lot of work to move the. It, now that the building's in the middle, yeah. it seems like we are getting a pretty good buffer between, you know, uh, you know, if you're, yeah. on the, if you're on the trail, a building doesn't just like come and hit you in the face when you're trying to walk down it. So yeah, I think it's like 15 feet from the property line, and then you know, parking stalls, 20, 40 plus 25, so 20, 40, 60, about 75 feet. Um, okay, separation. There. Thanks, Scott. Anything else, guys? All right. Uh, in that case, we'll open up the uh, uh, public comment portion for this agenda item. If there's anyone out there that would like to speak, come on up and state your name and address for us. My name is Clay Goldberg. I live at uh, 16500 Road, and that's directly west of this project. Uh, on the other side of the river and um, one of the concerns I have is when they did build the Hobby Lobby building they came in and wholesale removed all the trees along the river there and they're not come back uh, there were trees and there still are large trees and I see on their landscaping plan that there's a note that says preserve existing trees which are not on their property but they weren't on the property of Hobby Lobby either, and they took them all out. And so I'm wondering who's going to protect those trees. And they're conspicuously absent from any of their renderings. I know they're probably not concerned about that, but when you look at the renderings, the big trees are not there. So I wonder if somebody's going to get the idea. And then on Orange Road, on that plot that you were just showing, uh, on Orange Road on the on their side, the the sidewalk comes from Rio Grande along Orange Road to the first driveway cut. And then there's a driveway cut there that's already existing with a handicap cut on the west side. And then the sidewalk just ends, just ends. There's no sidewalk. And so as you walk from on the river trail from Hobby Lobby towards the north, or it's coming the other direction, you would have to traverse the entire project without having to cut through the parking lot to go to any of the businesses there. So I'd like to see that sidewalk extended at least to meet the river trail and perhaps the same thing on the north end of the property where there's no pedestrian circulation on the north side of the property either. That's a big project and I don't think it's very safe to have people cutting through the parking lot particularly. So my biggest concerns are the trees and the other thing. And just as a general comment, yeah, it's a, it's a, what you'd consider an attractive commercial building, but it doesn't do anything as far as solar or siding or anything as far as being a sustainable building. It's going to be a building that requires huge amounts of energy for refrigeration and heating and everything because there's nothing to protect it from the sun or to take advantage of the sun. As I pointed out the last hearing, that they're going to have nice problems on the north side with their ice dating rink in the winter on the north side of a 65-foot structure. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Clay. Is there anybody else that would like to comment? No? Okay. We'll close the uh, public portion, and uh, staff, real quick, um, can you comment on the trees that I believe then would be, if they're not on their property, then it's on the city property. Could you comment on the city, whether they're, they're going to be able to maintain those or with construction, are they going to have to be removed or how's that work? Yeah, so generally everything from the trail to the river has been dedicated to the city when River Landing was developed. 
Um, and that remained in old ownership, so before that was dedicated, I know there was some clearing and, and stuff that they did. Um, but since it's been dedicated, um, generally no tree is allowed to be cut down on city property without us knowing about it. So if that did happen, we would like to hear about that. Um, as far as this project goes, uh, same deal. They can't just go and cut down trees on city property. So um, I don't see a need that they would need to because this project is entirely um, on the development side of the trail. Um, so there shouldn't be a, they shouldn't be in that area anyway, um, unless we're doing some landscaping improvements, in which case that would be a collective thing. There is talk of um, potentially some uh, improvements along the trail for uh, outdoor rehabilitation type stuff. Um, but uh, in that, we would site carefully to preserve the mature trees and things of that sort. So um, there shouldn't be any reason they should be in our trees. And, and if anybody has in the past, we would certainly like to look into that. So. <laughs> And then Scott, could you also comment on uh, w whether or not there's a requirement as part of developing uh, this from, from the city standpoint as far as right away and curbs and things like that on Orange Road or, or anywhere else around the property? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, can you pull up the site plan, Will? Uh, yeah, he's correct. So Orange Road was built with sidewalk improvements both sides up to kind of the main entrance on the front of, of Hobby Lobby. Um, after that, it kind of turns into a truck service road, more or less, and there is no sidewalk um, between those two. Uh, generally, those kind of sidewalk improvements are part of site development. So when River Landing was built, so it kind of was a gray area, and it's something we looked at and debated back and forth when reviewing this site plan. Um, I believe the final uh, version was they didn't, they weren't adding sidewalk on from, they weren't adding any additional sidewalk to Orange Road. Um, we didn't really feel there was grounds for us to require that um, through typical site development regulations. And we took comfort in that, you know, it's a back entrance to um, Hobby Lobby. Uh, it is fully paved and accessible. So there is, a, you know, an ADA pathway uh, to get from the old river trail um, through this area up to Rio Grande. Um, you know, sidewalks are always great. Um, we wouldn't be opposed to it, um, but we didn't feel like we had grounds to require it. Um, I think kind of by nature of this thing, if that's something that the board would like to entertain, I'd, then I guess I'd turn to legal. If that's a something that they could seek as an improvement to the site plan, I think that's kind of the idea of this. So I think that's open for debate, but um, that's where we landed on it at staff level. There is um, along the, I have to look, zoom in, I think, can we zoom in? They're, they're only showing on-street parking um, east of that entrance. Um, so the paved area would remain paved. And I think that was because it was only 24 feet wide. So <clears throat> I'm actually a big sustainability advocate. And um, I know that the city also in the master plan and in their plans for the tw next 20 years is really focused on sustainability as well, or is trying. So is there something that we're requiring for bigger projects like this to fit into sustainability or how does that work? Yeah, so the primary thing on that is, is lead, you know, certification and, and green building and things of that sort. Uh, we don't. Um, so if things like that are imposed, um, it's generally in addition to the building code. You know, the building code have energy standards and things that we've adopted. Uh, we aren't more stringent than that. Um, and as a community, that's a balance point. So construction is extremely expensive to the point where it's hindering they all development. It's unfortunate because, you know, it, it's upfront capital versus long-term energy costs and things of that sort. As a city, we haven't, and it's there's very few communities that have mandated that. Um, it's generally um, left to the market, and that's something as a city we haven't mandated. Is it something that you suggest though, and always discuss, or is this something that maybe we should add into the conversation when we start? Um, as far as like going deeper than the energy code that's already adopted, we have not, we have never, we've never pushed that. We don't feel like that, that like that's our purview. Um, is that a fair statement? Thanks, Scott. Else, guys? Go ahead, Steve. Clarifying question. I think it's to Will, um, and maybe I'm just missing it in the, in the staff's presentation, specifically what um, decisions that the planning commission the criteria that the planning commission is adopting today is that just the list of that we're <coughs> applying to the case is that just the list you have at the beginning where you say staff analysis the site plan complies with the following 
is that the only <coughs> applicable part of the code on which we're making a decision? Because we've discussed, okay, sidewalks maybe, but it's unclear what if we, even if we did say, have <coughs> an inclination, that it would be nice if that, for the public interest of that, or for whatever reason, not if it was in the code. <coughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah. It's unclear what if we have any jurisdiction to, to even talk to, you know, a weigh in on the sidewalks or not. Could you comment specifically on what on what parts of the code or what, what, what our decision making outline is? Um so I'd maybe lean on, on Chris a little bit for this, but um generally when 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 you're looking at large retail site development, um the and I'm trying to pull it up here quickly. Um the Site plan uh, in, on page 71 of the packet, uh, which shows the uh, criteria that we look at, um, that is the, uh, the parts of the code that, um, I'm, first of all, we should be reviewing, and then second of all, the Planning Commission should be reviewing to make sure uh, all of that is in compliance. Do you want to add anything? So I, I'm currently looking to see, or searching to see if um, mm -hmm. if you have the jurisdiction to add the, um, the sidewalks. Uh, so I will try to get it to you by meeting's end. Um, however, I know I should have it at this moment. Um, but if I do not have it by meeting's end, I will definitely get it to you um, yeah. this week. Huh. So. And um, Martin, feel free to chime in if you want to, but I think we'd just reiterate, we were talking about this as a staff because as a group, this is one of the first large retail site developments that we've brought to you as a team. And so we had the same curiosity, what criteria apply. Um, so the criteria are limited. I think they're included in Will's staff memo about what can be considered and, and they're, um, they're, they don't range very far. Um, I see Martin popped on here. Do, do you have anything to add? Mr. Landers. Martin, would you like to add anything? Uh, you can. I think we're, Martin, we're not hearing you. Give us a second on our side. Looks like his, his internet or ours might be. Beyond what's already been. Greg, do you miss Zoom yet? <laughs> okay, it's, it seems like Martin might be chiming in, but we'll pull up the code section from, from um, that have the standards and read them to you. So 4116, and Will, can you just give us a, a brief summary of what they include? It's kind of long, actually, but what are, what are some of the criteria? Um. If it is just the criteria that we have in the where it says staff analysis, that was my question. That that's the only that's the only language that we're looking at where it lists staff analysis. So there is a, a code there with the sidewalks that it says if the parcel butts up against the public road, then it they're obligated to provide sidewalks. So the question about sidewalks is just whether that additional paved part counts as a public road or not. Is that what the city was what you guys were all discussing? Yeah, and it's yeah. It's not built as a, yeah, as a formal right of way. It's built as a truck ramp. I'm trying to look up to remember what was actually dedicated to the city, so I can pull that up here just one second. Did you have something to add on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Um, while I'm pulling that up, just sure. to keep Go it ahead, up. Jim. Just state your name and uh, address again for us. Jim Hartman, 2942 Vallejo. Um, so I would say that we're willing to do that sidewalk if we all think that it makes sense um, I think it might have just been an oversight or recommendation from uh, what we've worked through in the past but I think we have no problem putting that sidewalk forward if, if that's something you want to approve as conditional to get, get the approval today and then to the um, question about environmental so our capital our investors our partners we have something that's called ESG so I don't know if you've heard of that environmentally social governance so we actually strive to go above and beyond the local municipal codes and requirements. And part of that is really like fit well, you know, well-being. 
and putting things like bike racks and areas for people that have brakes and and actually I think the landscaping is something that we'd like to even improve and and include additional shading and buffers for the neighbors so I mean we want to be good neighbors and if there's larger trees we can install that might even be on the city's property I think we could look at things like that so um, I think we're we're definitely flexible and you guys have been great to work with so we want to just be good partners to, as well so just let us know what we need to do yeah. thanks Jim so I'd like to bring that up I think especially if you guys mentioned it in your staff meeting and you were kind of on the fence and you were not sure maybe that can be the new um, standard moving forward and to have those sidewalks on and sorry, when I was saying we discussed, we just discussed which criteria apply, not specific to the sidewalk issue, but just to make sure we understood um, what could be required of the applicant. Yeah, so and it sounds like, yeah, I guess if, if you guys want to add it, it sounds like a non-issue, it seems like a good, but we would totally support it. Yeah. And as we make the motion, then we have to add that it's with, that it's a voluntary change, right? Because it's not something we can ask, really. It's because he, he offered that we can now say a voluntary change, correct? So we add that to the motion, okay. Yeah, I think um, as discussed in the hearing, it's good language because you discussed it with the applicant. You're all good with that as well, okay. Great. Do you have any other concerns, questions? Chad? No, I, I do wanna speak up and, and say that, you know, uh, express my appreciation that you guys did move that building farther away from the river to lessen the impact on the the river and uh, the users of the river which speaks volumes to me about what the hospital is wanting to you know to, to respect that area of the river so thank you so much for doing doing that and uh, you know we definitely see that action from your part or at least I sure do yep thanks Chad Jan anything no yeah, go ahead. Sorry about that. Um, I do want to say to Clay Goldberg, I hope that some of your questions and concerns are answered. I thought you were, they were well thought out and presented to us very succinctly, and, and I appreciate you coming with those. And I hope, hopefully, you feel better about this when you leave. Yeah, I hope Scott can investigate the trees by Hobby Lobby. He's all over it. <laughs> like he doesn't have enough to do. <laughs> all right, guys, any, anything else to discuss? No? All right, then I, I will entertain a motion. I hereby make a motion to approve the request to approve the large retail site development plan for the Montrose Regional Health Ambulatory Care Center. The request meets the code criteria and standards based on the evidence and testimony presented at this hearing and in the staff report. As discussed in the meeting, the applicant will add sidewalks by the public road in the back. Yeah, add along the uh, northern side of Orange Road to connect um, where they currently stop to the existing recreation trail. Like he said, <laughs> can I do that? <laughs> Thank you. All right, do I have a second? What recordings are for? <laughs> yeah. You'll second? Okay. All right. Thanks, Phoebe. Um, all right, any any discussion on the motion? It's okay with it? All right, in that case, uh, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All right, the motion passes unanimously. Phoebe did. Yep. Okay, uh, 6700 Road, the uh, DiGiulio edition. Pull up. Give some time for people to clear out, I guess. So, uh, so this for this application, uh, this is an annexation application uh, and the initial zoning hearing that comes along with that. Uh, this is known as the 6700 de Julio edition, uh, which is located just south of the intersection of Miami Road and 6700 Road, and it's on a parcel that's currently addressed as 67008 Miami Road. Uh, this annexation is approximately 9.35 acres in size. 
and it is within the city's urban growth boundary, the city water service area, and the city sewer service area. Uh, this area is urbanizing and more than one-sixth of, of the perimeter is contiguous to city limits. The purpose of this annexation is to allow for the completion of 6700 Road. Most of the surrounding land is already within city limits. Uh, the properties on both the east and west are zoned as R1A Large Estate District, which is the zoning designation that we are proposing for this property. It is also adjacent to R2 Low Density District, R3A Medium Density District, and agricultural land that is outside of current city limits. During the annexation process, all properties annexed into the city uh, had previously not been subject to city zoning, and the Planning Commission makes a recommendation of a zoning designation to the City Council. The zoning designation recommendation for newly annexed properties shall not adversely affect the public health, safety, and welfare. Uh, according to our municipal muni Excuse me. According to our municipal code, the R1A Large Estate District is intended to provide an area of large single-family residential lots with a semi-rural environment. And so this here is the annexation map, which just shows the property that will be annexed with this application, uh, as well as the contiguity to city limits. According to our comprehensive plan, this area is designated as residential mixed density low. Uh, which, as, pre as stated previously tonight, provides primarily for single-family homes and possibly duplexes or townhomes. Uh, the property is within Growth Area 1. This growth area represents the most cost-efficient areas for the city to grow and primarily consists of platted but unbuilt lots, annexed but unplatted land, and unannexed small enclaves. And so, in summary, the area is urbanizing and this parcel meets the contiguity requirements from the state uh, this proposal is consistent with the public health, safety, and welfare, city and state annexation policies, and the comprehensive plan. Staff recommends approval of the R1A largest state district designation. Uh, and if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. William. Um, so, I, well, my first question was whether the city was the applicant or not, because I didn't see it on the agenda who the applicant was. So, uh, I guess this answers that. Um, so. The one question I have is, I, like, I get zoning it on the same as on either side. Like, we, we, we've, tried, we've done that a bunch with a bunch of the cleanup stuff we've done, uh, annexing those parcels and things and rezoning some of those. Um, is the parcel big enough to do anything other than the 6700 road? Like, what what's the plan for the rest of it? If the city owns it now, you build 6700 road, then what happens with the spare land on either side of it? Yeah, those are excellent questions. So, and I can speak to the applicant piece too. So, um, prior to this, the city council entered into a memorandum of agreement, or it's development agreement of sorts, um, and annexation agreement all in one, uh, for how this uh, property would develop and for securing the 6700 road rights of way. So, um, we we applied on their behalf. The De Julios are technically the applicant for this okay. one, um, just to it helped facilitate the capital project. Um, and then we worked with them of what the kind of development scenario would be. So once you uh, put 6700 road through there, it's a really weird parcel. It's um, about 300 feet long by, or 300 feet wide by 800 feet long or so. And so once you take out um, 6700 road, you're left with two remnant parcels on each side that are 90 to 110 ish feet uh, deep. Uh, so it's not, it doesn't leave room to put a, another road and put subdivision lots. Um, doesn't really lend itself well to do you know, big multifamily and things of that sort. So R1A was a logical fit because um, that's about the only size lots that are reasonably developable and it also matches the adjacent. Um, so the development scenario we've outlined in the development agreement was uh, six lots um, on each side. So they'd be six half acre lots and um, they would each have a joint driveway. Um, so for every two lots, you'd have one driveway with turnarounds so that people aren't backing onto 6700 road. And what that does is they, they wanted to, the owners, we offered to buy all of the land and, you know, um, look at what we would do with those remnants for a public purpose. Um, but they wanted to keep the land, and so we didn't want to leave them with land that was undevelopable. And so that's kind of the scenario we developed that would keep it safe so that they can still get access on the 6700 road, because we typically um, wouldn't do that for subdivisions, but in this case you have no choice um, because you can't get a secondary road there. Um, and then have viable lots again half acre lots kind of matches the surrounding um and uh, gives them something that they can develop so and is there anything scott that says that they have to wait to do that until the city has completed the 6700 road part of it 
So they're reliant on us to construct 6700 as their access and um, we have to, as part of our uh, product, just like we do with most minor arterials, we're extending water and sewer with the road and so those will be available there. So um, that was part of the development agreement uh, that the city would um, target to construct this the road project in 2023 and then um, if they choose to develop those side remnants, the owner, um, they would follow um, assuming shortly after in final plat uh, to match. Um, but they can't do much until the road is done. All right. Thank you. Anybody else got questions? Go ahead and open up the uh, public uh, portion of uh, this agenda item. If there's anybody out there that has questions, comments, concerns, please state your name and address for us. Michael Bernhardt. I live at 2819 Primrose Court. I think I'm going to be on one of those remnant. Um, I border, I, I'm right on 6700 Road in Miami. I border the pink house, that, that property there. So that will be owned by DeGiulio's um, as the, after the road goes through and then it's up to them to take that next step with development. Mike, Mike, you got to address. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Sorry. You got to address us we and, then we, we, and we can ask All right. staff for you. Thank you. You bet. So I, I, I bordered the, uh, one of those remnants. So on my, on my curiosity is um, when 6700 Road goes through next year, which I've been expecting since I bought the property, um, that remnant will remain just a remnant until um, the Julios decide to um, develop it under the conditions that have been stated. Okay. Um, and to kind of dovetail into something I didn't expect to see, there's some beautiful oak trees on that property. Um, I don't know if there's any plans for those, but we've just opened a brand new uh, amphitheater that could maybe use some shade in some areas, and part of the Montrose Summer Music Series. And uh, maybe those trees could, you know, have a fate other than a bulldozer. It's just a thought. Okay, thank you. Do we have the timer working? Is it working? <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure it's working. All right, is there anybody else out there that would like to comment? Please state your name and address for us. Jerry Galensky, 2811 Bluebell Court. I live, uh, like Mike does, up on that uh, land that's going to be sitting there. Will those homes be comparable with the homes that are next to it now, single story? And when will that be told? Oh, and they're talking about a bike path crossing down over onto Bluebell Court. Is that something that's in the books to be done? This is just what we've heard. Uh, where will that be positioned? Because my driveway is right there in the middle of that road. Okay. Thank you. My name is Ed Spada, 42702 Clover Court. I'm just curious what the city's going to do with our irrigation that we have there, too, that supplies our subdivision. We just uh, poured a new head gate and stuff last year, and uh, we don't know what they're going to do about it. If there be, well, we can still use it or what? Thank you. I got my list. Um, yeah, so as far as the remnant parcel, um, so the way the uh, 6700 right-of-way acquisition will work is they will dedicate 
uh, the right-of-way strip for the road and then the remaining uh, strips on each side will be about three acres total per piece they will be single lots initially um, so then if they want to further subdivide those to make the half acre lots that would be a plat that they would do themselves um, they have expressed interest so you know I think they are open to kind of whatever um, so they've we've had a couple people ask you know can we buy all of that parcel or portions of it um, the owners have in, indicated that they're um, willing to receive uh, inquiries about that because what that may drive if somebody wants a certain size or a certain piece maybe adjacent to their parcel to match uh, they could subdivide it that way and make the lines match and then sell that lot so that would be um, again this is private property so it's 100 percent at the their discretion the bounds they would have is they can't create a lot um, any smaller than a half acre um, so um, so yeah if anybody needs that contact information um, uh, you can just Google Scott, City Engineer for Montrose and uh, my, all my contact information comes up and I can um, pass that information along to contact the owners. Um, yeah, so initially it'll just be a large lot. Um, as far as the trees go, so every single project we work on, we try and preserve trees wherever we can. Um, the owner has the same interest. Sometimes when we do these acquisition deals, they're, you know, some people don't care about trees. Um, these guys absolutely do. And so they've expressed an interest in saving everything we can. Um, to help support that, we uh, bring an arborist and look at what can be moved. Sometimes, unfortunately, some are too large to move. You just can't do a tree spade. Um, they either would tip over the tree spade or, or die just because you'd be taking uh, too much of their root mass. Or they wouldn't have enough when it goes back in. So uh, we try and do that. There is a lot of great um, trees, a couple, um, yeah, both oak and pine trees on that property that um, we are working with the owners to preserve it's it's the bulk of them are on their land and so they would have this say of where they go uh, if they're okay with us taking them to a either you know an adjacent lot or you know, the amphitheater or something that's certainly something we're very open to and would love would love to do so um, as far as height so the city won't have any control over how they set up their houses outside of the zoning so the maximum height in the in that zoning district is 35 feet, which is two story, essentially two stories on a peaked house. So um, they could do two stories. Um, that being said, two story houses in Montrose are relatively, are less common than single story. Most are doing um, elderly housing just to make sure it's marketable to the large market and don't, doesn't have stairs. So um, zero entry or all the rage these days. So I think it's more likely that they would be single story, but they definitely would be entitled to if they wanted to go two story. And Staff, just real quick, 35 feet is for all residential zones, correct? So it wouldn't matter whether we zoned it anything different on this initial zoning. Heights, 35 feet. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. 35 Thanks. feet in almost every zoning district, including okay. every residential district. Okay, cool. And usually where that changes is if, yeah, an HOA decides to restrict further through their design covenants, which, again, we don't have any control over. So. Um, as far as the connection on Bluebell, so uh, the old, the original plat for Columbine, I think it's Columbine East that has Bluebell there, uh, actually reserved that to be a road connection. When this project first came out, the stakes were out in the neighborhood and says, ooh, what's going on? Let's have a meeting. So we actually met with the neighborhood and they uh, were very animate and unanimous that they did not want Bluebell to connect to the new 6700. So we're okay with that if the neighborhood's okay with that um, but what what we did see is valuable is that pedestrian connection and so that's something we're working out with the owner because it'll depend on how they subdivide those lots where that easement would be to run a rec trail between the two so the desire is to have the connection mostly for that neighborhood so if that neighborhood wants you know this 6700 arterial will become kind of the backbone to get this entire area of town once you go down 6700 which we have a couple extensions planned there through the bridges down east oak grove down woodgate realignment you have full connection to all the southern uh, South Montrose commercial centers and the rec center. And so we see this as a very important pedestrian corridor. Um, you know, the way Columbine East is built right now, uh, Columbine Point, I can't remember which I was going to mix up. I apologize. I was, I'm just going to say Columbine. Uh, you know, they would have to go up to uh, Miami, down along Miami, and back down 6700. So there would be a lot of value in having this pedestrian connection, and that's something we've already planted the seed with the owner. Um, and as they develop, uh, we would try and work to get that secured. Um, they didn't want to wholesale put it on this initial plat because they didn't want it to end up in the middle of the house depending on how they have to subdivide their, their lot. So um, we're optimistic we'll be able to work that out and get that pedestrian connection. And then as far as irrigation goes, 
100% um, that is part of the city's project. So all irrigation functionality, both for this property and anybody else that has diversions alongside the 6700 road project, we would work with the uh, water users of that to uh, realign and, and or relocate any head gates. Typically they um, are improved with our projects because we a lot of times we'll use new stuff or uh, design it and ask them what problems they're having with it so we can hopefully get them a better design. So um, nine times out of ten it's better than what it was. That last one out of ten it's as, at least as good as what it was. Um, we never um, leave them with anything less functional than what they currently have. So, uh, You guys have any anything else? No? Okay, Jen, go comment. for it. You guys have been wanting to do this for a long time, haven't you? Yeah, we're very excited about this. I'm sure. Congratulations for working this out. Yeah, they kind of the last. Um, they were getting close to securing the right of way, um, kind of during the last building boom, and then the, it popped, and everything just kind of went by the wayside because there's a lot of uncertainty with funding and, and projects. So um, here we are again, and we're we're very excited. And the owners have been absolutely fantastic to work with. It's been a oh. great partnership. Good work. Thanks. All right, guys. Um, in that case, if there's nothing else to discuss I would entertain a motion go ahead Phoebe I hereby make a motion to recommend to City Council approval approval the initial zoning request of R 1a large dis estate district the request meets the code criteria based on the evidence and testimony presented at this hearing and in the staff report all right do I have a second I'll second thank you Delphine all right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All right. Motion passes. All right, William, do we have the applicant for the first agenda item that we moved? Yes. Okay. So uh, the applicant is here, so we're uh, ready to move forward with that. Um, let me just share my screen here one last time. Um, so this is a uh, sketch plan application for color red townhomes. Uh, this application is for a residential development that is approximately 0 0.3 acres in size and is located on lot 46 of the Cedar Creek subdivision, also known as 708 Cedar Creek Avenue. Uh, this proposal consists of a townhome subdivision which is creating five townhome sublots within a larger lot as well as common elements. Uh, these townhome lots are part of a fiveplex, but the plan is to sell each unit individually, thus necessitating the sketch plan review process. Uh, the property is zoned R4 High Density District, so multifamily structures are allowed as a use by right. Um, of course, you saw this previously in the, uh, tonight's meeting, but the subdivision process first requires a sketch plan. Uh, as you know, this uh, serves as a means to provide feedback to the applicant and no approval or denial was made at this stage. According to our comprehensive plan, this area is listed as residential mixed density high. This is primarily intended for attached buildings on individual lots such as townhomes, which we have here, or multifamily structures like ap apartments or condos. Um, as you already know, the comprehensive plan is a guiding document showing general locations for land use and density. The municipal code is the regulatory document regarding land use, density, setbacks, etc. Development should occur in accordance with approved zoning and in general conformance with the comprehensive plan. Uh, according to the code, R4 is intended for high density multifamily housing and the proposed use is a use by right. The property is adjacent to other R4 zoning as well as some, uh, as well as some R3A medium high density district. Uh, here are our dimensional requirements for R4. As the requirements state, multifamily housing can have a maximum density of one unit per 2,300 square feet of lot size. This proposal does meet that requirement. Uh, also note that this application consists of dividing into sublots to be sold as townhomes. The overall building should still comply with all setback requirements within the lot as a whole, which this does. Uh, and so here's the site plan for the project. Uh, the individual units are labeled as one, two, three, et cetera, within the parcel as a whole. And then this here is a grading and utility plan. Uh, these plans are also in tonight's packet where it's probably a little easier to see. Uh, and so as you know, the review of a sketch plan is non-binding and serves as a way for you to provide uh, guidance to the applicant. 
No formal action is taken at this time. We recommend that you share feedback with the applicants that they may consider this feedback and incorporate proposed changes into their next steps. And so with that, I'll ask the applicant, Garrett Smith, to uh, step forward. Hello, Garrett Smith, 15621-6120 Road, Montrose. Um, I apologize for my tardiness. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is an exciting development for us. Uh, it's five plex. We will be doing an HOA to try to preserve uh, uh, some of the, the surrounding you know, landscape, etc. The preserve some of the ex uh, the exterior aesthetics of the property. This is something that I, I personally is my personal project. Something that I believe in, um, and it's it's really for workforce housing. That's what that's what we're going for in Montrose. This is one of hopefully many projects that's not quite as large as the other uh, projects uh, that my predecessors just proposed but uh, uh, with that I guess I'll just open it up for any questions that you guys might have anything sp specific I can answer yes so you're right behind some I believe they're deed restricted townhomes and affordable housing and so I'm wondering if you're going to do any program that it's based on income is it going to be affordable housing or just regular housing what's your plan I would have, except there was no subsidies available. So, yes, uh, if there was, then I would, but there's not. So, I'm gonna have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, go the traditional route on on these townhomes. So, the parking for these structures. Um, first of all, I assume from what I read from the drawing. The, 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 uh, the occupants drive over the sidewalk and then are going to be parking beyond the sidewalk on the property itself. What is the length of those parking spaces? Where those, yeah, the parking Roughly spots. 20 feet. So we've got 20 feet from the boundary line to the, uh, the building, the columns that are holding up the balconies. And then between the boundary lot line and the sidewalk, there's roughly 5 feet. So 25 feet total between this, the edge of sidewalk and the column. So 25 feet of usable parking space. Great. Thank you. And where I always, you know, what, what I'm concerned about is workforce housing drives big trucks, big trucks are long, and I hate to always see those trucks impede the sidewalk is where I'm, that's my motivation. So gotcha. thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. William, could you bring up the, uh, no, I can just look at Chad's. Hold on. So it looks like the, I mean, it, it's not a big, it's not a big lot. Um, we're taking up quite a bit of it with, obviously, with the building. Um, when we're doing this process, are all the, I guess, the city's requirements for um, landscaping, things like that, do those get thrown out because we're going through this process, the subdivision process, versus just a use by right situation? Or do, do those things still apply? So landscaping uh, requirements apply at the site development phase. Um, so during the sketch plan and during the preliminary plat, um, landscaping is not considered. Okay. Uh, however, ultimately when the applicant uh, seeks a building permit and has to go through site development, uh, we would review for landscaping at that time. All right. I'd also add uh, to Chad's point too, we also review for dimensional um, standards on parking. So some of the initial renditions have driven that building being set back further, but we're also looking at that side area parking to make sure there's enough maneuvering. Um, to get out of those parking spaces that run along the, I think it's the kind of northwestern side there. So. Cool. Anything else, guys? All right. We need more housing, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess we'll open up the public uh, comment portion for, for this one. If there's anybody out there. No? Dean, you sure? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, Okay, and in that case, we'll close the public uh, portion. Um, yeah, anything else, guys? I mean, 
Yeah, it's great. Yeah. If we can add five, that's that's great. If we could add more, it'd be even better. But we'll we'll take we'll take five. <laughs> okay. Um, in that case, I'll uh, entertain a motion. Oh no, we don't have a motion. Never mind. <laughs> I could I could entertain one. Um, all right. Well, in that case, uh, Garrett, uh, I guess good, good good luck. Congratulations on on this phase, and I, we'll see you at some point in the future here. All right. Cool. Um, all right. Other business. Do you guys have anything? We've got a couple things. If you don't, uh, I do have one thing. Okay. Um, so yes, uh, I I'm a little late to the party, but yes, the sidewalks <laughs> as uh, that is good. We didn't cause a legal problem. <laughs> yes, no, we did not. Um, so si since it is part of the requirements here, uh, if you felt that as though they they did not meet that requirement. Um, in order to further it, to approve it, yes, you, you could have said, yes, you are not uh, putting a sidewalk here that is uh, abutting the, the city street. Um, if it is, in fact, a city street, then yes, you could put that requirement on there. So, um, again, I apologize for being a little tardy on it. However, I wanted to make sure that, that we were aware of it. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, it's confusing because we don't know if it's a well a city street because it's it's the access for the vendors to the building, correct? Yeah, it's it is dedicated as a right of way. I looked that up, um, okay. but it's not built as a city street yet. So, um, and functionally, it was kind of intended because they thought Orange Road would go through and over the river. We all know that's out the window. That's the way things of the river area has developed. Um, that that's not viable, and so it, you know, should it be right of way, that's where it gets a little. Harry, but but I think yeah, non-issue since they're willing to play along. So. Cool. Well, while we're back on that subject, Scott, is there any more plans for developing that trail any further north? Because he's right, the trail does simply end after these lots. Yeah. So the uh, there was a recent annexation two years ago on the property immediately to the north. Um, through that annexation agreement, we were able to secure the right of way to continue that trail. Um, so as that develops, that would likely be the impetus for that trail to continue north. Um, and it would ultimately connect to uh, the rec trail, the connect trail and, and East Oak Grove. Timeline 2023? Um, <laughs> <laughs> fully dependent on development. Okay, thank um, you. Which they, that area, um, we get, the owner there seems motivated. I would suspect something would happen within five years. Great, thank you. All right, so uh, we were interested in just update on uh, applications and hiring process for both uh, the alternate for here and uh, our senior planner position. How that's going? So I do not remember right now when the alternate position closes, but I think it closes in time to be reviewed by council at the next work session. Um, so that'll come soon. I think it's that first meeting in June. And then the senior planner position, which we changed into a planning manager position, um, we have not hired any of the applicants that came through for that round and I'm working with HR and I've also reached out to a recruiter um, to talk about next steps and see and I've talked with Martin a bunch about it too um, what to do and unfortunately many communities are experiencing the same kind of challenge um, we're really lucky because um, not, other communities don't usually have someone as great as Will and Scott and Chris on their team. So thanks again, um, because they're really doing great. So I don't have a, a concrete update for you right now. Um, we may open it as a different type of position. Um, we may just work with a recruiter as it's posted. Um, if we've reviewed our salary, it's competitive. Other things are competitive. I think it's just a really hard time for people to move right now. A lot of uncertainty in terms of housing and other things that we're aware of. So we're still working on it and um, you know, give, give Will a high five when you see him. And, well, and talking thanks. about high fives, you know, I'm a big believer of promoting within. Is it something that we've considered? Does he not qualify to be promoted to management? And then maybe it's easier with less requirement to hire a, um, to fill in his position instead? Yeah, I'd be happy to talk with you. It's kind of personnel matters that you're bringing up, which we don't, you know, usually do at a public meeting. But um, if you've got ideas, we can talk about them. And uh, I would like yeah, to Will's doing excellent. Thank you. The reason why I asked, no. uh, 
that I wanted to bring up this subject was if you do want somebody else on the interview committee, I would love to participate in the interview process. Great. So, um, oh, that's a great idea. I don't know if we've done that before, but thank you. Yeah. Yep. That has a background in HR. That's right. <laughs> if, you forgot, if you forgot. The, uh, the I'm first time. Missing those interviews, you know. So. Yeah. Are you itching to get back into it? Not in HR, no. <laughs> okay, because we, we just hired one of those positions too. But No, no, um, no. I've walked away happily. All right. But the, in this position, I'd happily get involved. <laughs> thanks. And um, thanks to our, our legal research team um, at the end, the alternate position for planning commission closes on May 31st. So, um I think we have at least one, someone who had applied before, um, asked for their application to be carried forward, and we may have at least one more. Um, Lisa's on vacation, not, uh, conference, conference right now, so if more came in, I don't know about it. We've got at least a couple. Um, thanks, yeah, and thanks for asking. Sorry for not giving you more of an update on the hiring front. Um, I mean, working Scott, on how's it. how's Woodgate doing? <laughs> oh, man. They tell us the boxes are getting demolished on Friday. So, uh, if you want to clap, I'll clap with you. <laughs> Two years we've been waiting on that to um, move. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to. Oh. Yeah, so the. Yeah. And the, yeah, the road portion, um, so yeah, once the cabinets are out of the way, there's still work for us to do. Um, we're telling people early June, early July, um, but hope to beat that. But the market's weird right now, so I, I've made a liar out of myself on a lot of timelines. So. Can I ask you a question about that? Are you going to leave the signs up that say local traffic only? Oh, uh, in the Vista San Juan? Well, uh, yeah, and the other. So what we're going to do, once the new road is open, we're actually going to um, put up kind of a more aggressive block there to try and get people in the habit and let them know that this other one's here so sign a detour and, and reroute them onto the Woodgate the new Woodgate alignment because um, people are creatures of habit and if they've been shortcutting through that neighborhood for 10 years um, it's hard to break that habit and to know that this new one's open and it's faster so we want to because it will be faster so we want people to learn that it's a lot easier to take their the proper road um, than to shortcut through the neighborhood so we will do that initially and then um, we kind of evaluate how it goes, whether we change some signage. Uh, the neighborhood at one point requested the, at least one of those uh, entrances to East Oak Grove be uh, blocked off completely. Um, so that's something that if the neighborhood wants, we're not necessarily opposed to. Um, there's EMS, emergency response type stuff we have to work out um, on an idea like that. But uh, um, Well, I'm asking about Arbor and the other one also. Yeah, so whichever, I, I get Arbor and Imogene mixed up. I think whichever one's um, west of the Hillcrest extension, where it comes through, um, you know, if they're taking a right off of Hillcrest and then a quick left onto Arbor, I think it is. Uh, oh, that would, yeah. Um, something we've considered. But either way, we will close them um, more robustly once, uh, in a temporary basis, Thank once you. the wood gate realignment's open for a couple months to get people Thank you. adjusted. <laughs> it's become yeah. it's become sort of an informal arterial. Yeah. It's not really an arterial. Yeah, and that was kind of the main impetus for the project. What? Was that was kind of the primary impetus for the project yeah, um, is part of that. having an alternate to towns in north south. You know, they in the past they put the neighborhood right in the way, and that's why we have good planning commissions now that, that and master plans to make sure those kind of things don't happen. But sometimes we're left to fix what was previously allowed. Scott, is the you said the 6700 road. Uh, extension the stuff we just annexed uh, dropped you know off the radar the last time the market crashed or whatever um, has the city secured that budgeting for that to, to get that going as soon as yeah so through the development agreement we um, agreed to you know recommend award to council we can't bind council through any of our staff actions so ultimately it's up to council I will say, you know, going into the 2023 budget season, that's starting now, and we're fiscally um, sound. You know, a lot of the dollars, um, you know, capital and reserve type stuff that um, would help fund these are in place. So, you know, unless unless there is something extremely drastic, I, I don't see it being um, a problem. But you know, we always have to leave that out because who knows what tomorrow is going to bring. All right, cool. You guys, got anything else? Nope. All right. Uh, in that case, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, sorry. Next meeting.
We have next meeting, Will? Yes, we do. Okay. Awesome. See you All right. Motion to adjourn. All right. Second. Done. Yep. <coughs> I don't know.